when you're pricing a product or a service to transfer from one division to another division. So for example, PepsiCo owns Pepsi and they also own fast food restaurants. They could sell the Pepsi to the fast food restaurants at the same price that they charge external market. But they probably don't because will it then get sold um, at their fast food stores? Yes. So they come up with an internal price that makes sense and shares that final outside external profit between the internal players. So how you do transfer pricing, which is the internal pricing approach, is as follows. You always know that there is a ceiling. You wouldn't transfer from one division to another at more than the market price. In other words, if the buying division could go out and buy it at, say, $10, they are not going to pay inside prices of $12. The maximum they will pay is what? What everybody else in the world pays, the market price. And that's the ceiling. The floor says, if I am a selling division from one division to another, I need to recoup my costs. In the short run, I need to recoup at least my variable costs. And the reason I need to recoup at least my variable costs is if I make the product do I pay those costs? Yes. Fixed costs sometimes come into consideration and sometimes don't. What's the determining factor? You're right, whether we're past break-even. If we're past break-even, are fixed costs relevant anymore? No, because we've already covered them. And in that case, if I'm only looking at transferring costs uh, or products above the break-even point, then variable cost is the only one I need to consider. If I'm transferring from one division to another and I haven't yet broken even, then fixed costs do come into play because I have to recoup those fixed costs before, you know, a profit is even possible. Most businesses negotiate the price between the market and the variable cost. So between the ceiling and floor, you bring the two divisions together and you say, let's talk about what the price is going to be, what the transfer price is going to be. And it's usually based upon some cost plus. So cost plus some portion of profit or whatever. So let's take a look at exercise 15 and see if this makes sense to you. In exercise 15, we are patch watch and we have a store and we're going to transfer these factory second watches from one store to another store. And we want to figure out what to do. Now the unit price, if we sell these watches to the outside retailers, is $25. So if I say unit price if sold to outside retailers, which one of these is that? You're right, it's the market price. So the market price is $25. So that's the maximum transfer price. The second thing, it says the variable cost per unit is $10. So in order to do these factory second watches, it costs me $10. So the minimum transfer price would be $10. It also says that there's a fixed cost per unit of $5, but we're already past break even. So is that relevant or irrelevant? irrelevant, isn't it? And then finally it says the second store profit markup is 40%. So we have a markup of 40%. So if I was using cost plus pricing, I would take the variable cost of $10 plus 40% of $10, which would be $4, and the cost plus or the negotiated price would be $14. Does that $14 negotiated price for transfer fall between the ceiling and the floor? And it does. So let's see if we can answer the questions. Number one says, what is the market-based transfer price alternative? And we already said it's $25. Second, what is the minimum transfer price alternative? And you already told me that. It's $10. And third, 
Compute the cost plus transfer price alternative, assuming the cost includes the variable cost only. Have we done that as well? Yep, it's $14. So this is an example of transfer pricing, which generally is negotiated between the buying and the selling divisions.